Good morning. You excited being in God's house or what this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. It's so great to be here this morning. And it was great. I just I was able to give last time I tried. I was able to give blood here last time they came several months ago. And then they called me up and wanted me to give at their place over there on military drive in Goliath. So I went over there and my iron was too low then. You know, the older you get, the iron kind of goes. Anyway, especially the iron on my arms. I ain't stronger than these. But anyway, uh, and so <laughs> it's, it's, it's bad, brother. It's bad. You wait. Anyway, uh, and uh, so my iron was so I wasn't able to give. But today my iron was level, was, was up again. Never so, so I was able to give. And uh, so what a, what a blessing it is to be able to do that. Only if you're able to. And I understand there's all kinds of situations out there. But there's lives to save, you know, if we're able to do that. So what, what a really blessing it is. Really sweet ladies out there running that uh, mobile. It's really great. This morning we want to welcome you to Southside Baptist Church. It's great to be in the house of the Lord to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's all about one day we will be in the great assembly in heaven. We better get ready for it now so this is a good exercise time to come every week and come and praise our Lord and our Savior together in corporate worship. The announcements, of course, today we're having the blood drive. You know, they'll be out there until I think 1 or 1, 1.30, Judy, 1, 1 o'clock. Okay, yes. Uh, ladies Fellowship, we're going to start that back up again. Uh, the ladies are going to start that back up again. I ain't going to do nothing. Okay. Um, it's going to be Thursday, October 21st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Potluck. Potluck. Does that, that mean everybody brings a little chow or something like that? Okay, good. We want to thank everyone who was able to help yesterday with the Vernon Bratton Memorial. You know, Patty Bratton's husband went home to be with the Lord. Thank you. And uh, we had a memorial here yesterday. That's what these flowers are here for. And uh, we had 150 plus people here. It was packed. It was really a big crowd. And we fed almost every one of them also. And so y'all who served in the kitchen, y'all who served on the serving line, y'all who just came in, in, in fellowship, thank y'all because uh, we got tons of compliments on the service of our church for, for, for the bereaved. And so it was, it's a, it's. It's great to shine for Jesus Christ. And, and so thank you all of y'all volunteers who gave of your time and your efforts to decorate, to serve, to cook, whatever, whatever, just, or just to be here yesterday when you were able to. This morning we're going to be in some most exciting scripture. Isn't all scripture so exciting? Uh, we're going to be in something I talk about every week. I bring it up and I make a little comment every week about Revelation 3.20. Your heart's door. Your heart's door. So, what, but first, I got a couple of little sayings today that we have. If you want to be popular, preach happiness. If you want to be unpopular, preach holiness. Amen. The thought for today is this. If Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel were alive today, most churches would not want them in their pulpit. They're too negative. They preached about sin a little bit. That's interesting. Let's stand now as we look at God's Word in Revelations 3.20, and we go over this every Sunday through the Roman roads, so you probably need to know, you can probably have that by memory. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scripture. Let me get here. And it says here, Behold, and we're going to go over that word. I love that word, behold. I, very important word there too, stand at the door and knock. If any man, any woman, any, hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he or she with me. Father God, we just ask your blessings upon the reading of your your word, Lord, this is your word. This is red letter stuff, Lord. This is important scripture. So help us, Lord, to put our names right in this verse today and talk to my heart today through your word. Give us strength to go through the trying times. Give us comfort in the hard times, Lord. And let us realize that every day of our lives, you are knocking at the door of our hearts. You're there every day. You're there as soon as we wake up in the morning. Lord. Now, we're going to answer that call are we going to answer the call of the world to come in? Be with us, dear Lord. Just be with me. Let me preach your word, not my word, dear Lord. It's all about you. 
there'd be somebody here today that needs a closer walk with Jesus Christ, let them take that great step today and open the door of their heart to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, this is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in the heart's door of the sinner. Get the picture here, okay? Now, bear with me. Now, we're all sinners. Amen? Some of us are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, and some of us are lost sinners. There's only two kinds. Of, everybody's a sinner. because The Bible says, for all have sinned. And I do believe that encompasses everybody here today, including myself. So, this verse is speaking to all of us today. Not only knocking to come into the, to the sinner's heart for the first time, but he's knocking at the believer's heart to come in every day. Because we deal with life every day. Amen? And until we go home to glory, we're going to deal with life. So we're going to let life come in and tear, our, tear us up, or we're going to let Jesus Christ come in every day. Who's knocking on your door? The English artist, Holman Hunt was the guy's name. Interesting name. He attempted to put this concept on canvas. He pictured Christ standing at the door. Judy, you can go ahead and put that up here if you got it, honey. We got that picture for you today. See that? So look at Jesus standing at the door. And when he first put the picture up there, this is what he put. And he was criticized heavily for this picture by his counterparts. Often they said to him, Holman, you left off a very important part of the door. You left the handle of the door off. Hunt replied, this door is the picture of the human heart. And the handle of the door is on the inside. Woo! Man, is that great? Okay, time for invitation. Let's go home. That's it. Anyway, go. <laughs> so, this is the picture of Christ that we have in the book of Revelation. He stands at the door and he knocks. He will not crash the door. He will never force the door open. You'll never see him shoving. You'll never see him begging. He's just standing there knocking. Regardless of what some extremist may say about the matter of election. That means there's only a certain elect few who are going to accept Christ. The Lord has moved heaven and hell to get the door of your heart and my heart. But when he gets there, when he gets to the door of our heart, he will stop and he will knock. He will never force his way in. Amen? So, you'll have, to, you'll have to open the door to him yourself, Albert, every day of your life. Because this is for the Christian, too. I've got to walk with Jesus every day. Or, or, or you know, it's going to be the wrong way if I don't walk with my Savior. I'm going to be making mistakes, and we make mistakes all the time. Things happen to us all the time. But if we let Jesus in, he says... I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you through every storm you go through. I was reading a book not too long ago. I can, if I can actually read it. Uh, and uh, C.S. Lewis, I told you this story. He was losing his wife to a disease. So he was coming out of the church praying fervently. One of his atheist counterpart, counter, teacher at Oxford University, where he was a professor at, said, what are you going there and praying? God ain't going to answer. There ain't no such thing as God. He, he says, he ain't going to answer that prayer for you anyway, even if there is a God. It ain't going to come out right. He says, I'm not in there asking him to answer my prayer. I'm in there asking him to, answer, to change me, to change me to his way. No matter how, how it turns out, I will still serve my Lord, no matter what. If he chooses to save my wife, okay. If he chooses to take her home, okay. I want to go closer to him. I am not here to criticize him. I am here to bless his holy name. He says, I, he says, I will come in to you. 
and I'll sup with you. I mean, he wants to sit down. He wants to bring something. And guess what? Potluck. That's potluck. There. That, but this is holy potluck. When Jesus comes to the meal, he can bring some holy food. We're going to talk about that in a minute. This speaks of fellowship. We need to fellowship with him every day of our lives. Because life is not always good to us, is it? It's not good to the ones around us, is it? The ones who criticize us and put us down and, and give us miserable lives sometimes. We serve a Lord that wants to be right there with us and comfort us through all that garbage. See, this, this speaks of fellowship, of feeding on the Word of God, and to come to know Jesus Christ better and better. Think about this with, with this, this morning. He is knocking right now, right this very minute. Do you know he's knocking on your door of your heart right now? Of whatever you're going to let in today. Are you going to let him come in today and bless you? Or are you already thinking about the number one order at Whataburger? You can mobile order now. So I don't want to see no mobile order now. You don't mobile order, you get out of this church. Anyway. So <laughs> Have you let him in this morning? See, y'all let him in this morning because that's what you're doing here. You let him in. He says, hey, pulling you to church. Come on, come on. I'm going I'm to come into you. Go to church and, and fellowship. Go fellowship with the believers. Go, have a, go, go praise my name. Go lift me up in spirit. Have you let him in? How about yesterday? How about last week? Are you listening to, to the sermon or, 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 or is your door shut? And you're busy thinking of something else or viewing something on social media right now, which happens in service sometimes, you know that? Probably more time than we'd like to think. Something that has nothing to do with listening to Jesus Christ. I pray you are, Albert, paying attention. Even as believers, we, we have a door that needs to be open to Jesus constantly. How do we handle things each and every day? How do we treat our loved ones? And I am not talking about how we treat them at church or in front of others. I'm talking about how do we treat our family members behind closed doors. See, because if you've opened your door to Jesus, he's going to be in there with you and you're going to make the better decisions to treat your family and others with love instead of hatred, instead of anger. Our friends or co-workers, how about them? Our neighbors. Man, I made so many disturbances when I was on the police force for neighbors that couldn't stand each other. They hated each other's intestinal fortitude. They would complain about each other for everything. And then you'd meet the neighbors who didn't even know who their neighbors were. They lived next door to them 15 years. I don't think I know them. I, don't, I see them walking out of the house every once in a while. Go meet them suckers. I mean, them people. Am I opening up to Jesus all the time? Or just when I feel like it? And then shutting it when I want my own prideful way, Albert. You see, what I mean is, is our door open to Jesus all the time? This is, our, this is not your neighbor's door we're talking about today. This is your personal door, your heart. That's exactly what that picture depicts, your heart. The Bible is very clear on this point. So please pay attention to with me as we move on. Let's work on ourselves this morning. This is the only way God's kingdom is going to grow. Did you know that? That's the only way. If we individually work on our own door. And we, like you say, we, that picture that we just uh, put up there, Judy, can you put it up there again, please? Thank you. That picture right there, if you'll go to the kitchen today after church, that picture is now in the hallway over there. 
Every time you go by, I want you to look at that picture. I want you to show your children, your grandchildren, that picture and explain to them what it means. That thing, every time they go by, they're going to be looking for that door handle. First person finds the door handle gets the prize. But you, there ain't no fair drawing it on there. But we got that picture right down the hall. We ordered it and it, got, it came in. It was 16 by 20. Beautiful picture. It'll be in the hallway from now on right there. I've looked all over this door and have yet to find the handle. So it appears to me, as it states in Scripture here, that we all are responsible for our own doors. If you want to improve your life, to serve Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, then you must open your own door. The verse starts here. Let's kind of take it apart a little bit. Behold. Behold. That's a very strong word in Scripture. In other words, pay attention right now. Okay, what you doing? Pay attention right now. Did you hear what I said? Okay, anyway. Watch, view, observe what's fixing to go on here. What I'm fixing to say is going to be important. And guess what? This is red letter. Jesus is talking in the book of Revelations. Revelation. God's got something to say to you. God's got something to say. Listen, listen. Pay close attention. God's got something to say. And then he adds another very important word. Behold, I. Oh, the great I am is standing at your door. And we can let him in and sup with him any time. I hope the door stays. I, I, I want to I I put a chain on my door and just chain that sucker open to Jesus. You just come on in any time. Behold, I. That's powerful. Let's take Scripture serious. That's powerful stuff. Now, this being red letter, it means pay attention because I be talking now. This is the Savior talking. Now we back up. Now this is not really something else. Remember how I said Jesus' first words were repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Now this is, I'm going to show you something here. You probably already know, but this is cool. In verse 19, the verse just before this, the second part of that verse, Jesus says in Revelation 3, 19, B, or sometimes they say C, when you, however you break it up. It says, be zealous, therefore, and repent. They're saying it again. So before you, when you open that door, you need to have a repentant heart. Lord, I'm sorry if I offended you. Come on in. Let's party down. Because see, that's what opens the door of Jesus is repentance. Being sorry for what things, maybe I have, how I have done this past week, how I have treated people, what I have thought of, what I have done myself, who I have drugged down by what I allow in my life. That word repent is so important to true salvation and true forgiveness of sin. We must open the door and re- with a repentant heart and not let our prideful, greedy, unforgiving, jealous, bullying, etc. hearts get in the way of Jesus coming in. Because those things will close the door on Jesus immediately then you start to react like the animals that we are, the lost animals. These things are, and many other sins will keep our doors shut to truly letting Jesus in our private, our private, did I say private? Dangerous stuff. Private business. That's why Jesus used the word repent Right before this verse. I cannot serve Jesus and be proud of my sins at the same time. So you see, in this reprobate world we are living in today, that is why immorality and sin now wants to have months set aside so they can be proud of their sins. Pride. Proud of what? Proud of a sinful, God 
against God lifestyle. They are now proud of it. Hey, get out there and be proud of your sin. I didn't get God. Get, get. See, that's why they don't want to hear about God, because they don't want to repent. They don't want to turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. They will never open their door until they have a repentant heart. Well, let's move on. Behold, 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 I stand where? At the door. Jesus does not. I guess, you know what I like about that? I what? I stand. We don't have a Savior that sits around on the job. We don't have a Savior that sits around as the lazy Savior and says, take care of it yourself. We have a Savior that says, I'm going to stand up strong for you, and I ain't backing down from Satan for nothing. So get behind me, and we'll defeat Satan together out of our lives. Amen? He stands up for us when we need him. And in this day and time, brothers and sisters, we need him. If you say, I don't need Jesus, well, you got pride in the way you just close the door on Jesus Christ. I am a lost sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, and I need him every day in my life, every minute of my life. He says, I will never, what do we not understand about never, leave you or forsake you. We have a Savior that stands up for us in our trouble. I often get told to, by individuals uh, that to stand up straight. Stop hunching, boy. I come from a very official person in my lifestyle, in my life. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh. Well, well we, serve a, we serve a Savior that never hunches over. He is, stands up proud for us. He says, I'm going to be proud. Of, I'm gonna, when I come in, I'm going to come in as a strong Savior, standing up. I ain't backing down from nothing. You can handle all things through me because I'll give you. Go on my strength, not your hunched over strength. We Jake, cut it. Cut it. Anyway. <laughs> but there's an old song. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. I cannot remember the second verse, so who gives a lizard leap? Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway. So when we open our door, we allow in a Savior who will show us how to hold up our spiritual shoulders in times and hard times. I stand at the door. I don't sit. I don't hunch over. I don't crawl for anybody. I don't lay down on the job because I have overcome the world. Amen? Now, that's a Savior. And Jesus then says, and I am knocking. I'm knocking. He's knocking at the door of our every thought and our every habit. Have you opened the door to Jesus with how you communicate with the world? Ooh, there's a touchy one. What are you putting on social media, on Twitter, texting, emailing? brothers and sisters in Christ, including Brother Albert, okay? Are you allowing the world to knock at your door and causing you to put things out there that may be dragging someone else down? Putting someone else down? Embarrassing someone else? And actually, when you embarrass someone else, you're embarrassing yourself. You see... When you open the door to Jesus, you should be wanting to post things that glorify our Savior and not yourself or your hang-ups. Give your hang-ups to Jesus. Stop putting them on social media everywhere. If it's all about you, then you better check your door. It's most probably closed to Jesus. Be very careful 
what you're putting out there to the world, it may just cause another person to stumble. And we are not to be stumbling blocks, according to Romans 14, to anybody. Remember, to, the Bible says not to be a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in your brother's or sister's way. Many, when you choose social media, many are watching you. Even the young. Even the young. And if you open your door of your heart, he says, I will gladly come in. And I, now you know what he's going to bring in? He says, I'll pile up. Pile up. Come on, I got, I got something for you here. You know what he's going to bring in? A big old bowl of spiritual food. Big bowl of it. Man, we just, just get all of your face. Get it out. Just eat all of it. Man, this is great. Just, bigger, just be a... Just, just eat. Anyway, okay. <laughs> See? And that spiritual food, when you allow Jesus to come in, is going to change your life. Amen? Because then you're going to want to do what the spiritual food done filled you up with. Have you been completely changed by Jesus? Well, then maybe you need to open the door a little wider. Let me tell you about Jesus Chow, okay, this morning. We had a great meal here the other day, and it was kind of, we wanted it to make it look like, but you know, because of the pandemic, we don't have like a lot of food to come in out from outside. We don't know, the, you don't know what goes through, where it comes from, stuff. And that's, that's just to protect. So we, the church, was able, thanks for your tithes and your offerings and your free giving so well. We were able to pay for the whole thing, buy food, and make it look like potluck. And they did a great job in the kitchen, and the ladies did a great job serving, and it was just fantastic and everything. And that meal was fit for a king. I weigh every day, and I gained a pound and a half yesterday. Because I ate Southside Baptist food. You know, not, I didn't get, I should have ate spiritual food, brother. It would have been better for me. Anyway. But anyway, so Jesus says, I want you to eat my food. I'm going to bring it in. You don't have to furnish anything. I'll bring the meal in. You just open the door. See that? Because that spiritual food that he wants to bring through your door today is explained in the book of Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. That is exactly what Jesus is bringing to the meal when you allow him by opening your door to him and not the world. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. We're gonna, I'm going to explain that last part right there because sometimes I used to get confused on that. Let's start out with love. We are to love others with the love of Jesus Christ. The way we treat others many times is pure evidence that we have not opened the door for Jesus Christ or that possibly we have opened the door. Has has your outlook since Jesus came into your heart, has your outlook to others changed with how you treat people, how you talk to them, how you want them to treat you? Then you have joy. When we open the door to Jesus, we will have the joy of our salvation that will tower over all the earthly problems we come up against. Nobody, they can steal my happiness. And some of us here today, you're not very happy. Things are going on in your life, and I understand that. But they can never, Satan can never touch your joy. That's your eternal life. That's your eternal heaven. That's where Vernon's at today, right now. They just passed away. He's in his mansion right now, having a blast right now. Why? That's the joy of the Lord. That's the salvation experience that will tower all over our earthly problems. Nothing anyone can ever do to me can ever touch the joy I have of my salvation. Amen? 
That's what Jesus wants to bring in, that, that, that potluck, spiritual food. Peace. Jesus can bring peace into your hearts in the troubled waters of this life. Long-suffering. Jesus will bring, bring to your table a forgiving. Woo! Man, maybe there's somebody today, somebody here today needs to forgive someone for something. I never said they deserve it. They may have hurt you bad, but you need to forgive so you can move on. Jesus said, take my spiritual food, forgive them, and move on. Because they, you cannot grow in me if you have unforgiving spirit in your heart. You're closing the door. Like I said, I never said they deserved it. I never said you had to hang around them anymore. But we must forgive them. All right. A selfless, it ain't about me, it's about you. I want to serve, I want, I want to lift your spirits up. Just put it out last night, a bunch of texts. Look for somebody today to lift up. Patience. We need to be patient with each other, okay? That's one something I've got to really work on is patience. Especially with y'all. My gosh. Anyway. Uh, okay, I'm just... <laughs> enduring. You're, you're able to endure more because you have the joy of the Lord in your heart. And you'll have a tolerant heart. I'm going to put up with you. I love you. I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you till God changes your heart. And then he has gentleness there. Gentleness just simply means kindness, calmness, mildness. It's just, just a mild heart. And the Lord Jesus wants to, to, to bring goodness into your heart. Good, kind, and graciousness. Goodness. Faith. Faith tr just simply means belief. I believe in Jesus Christ with all my heart and all my soul. And I believe, I have opened my door, and I feel his presence in my heart. He's at my supper table right now. And I'm chewing down on that spiritual food. Both hands, just stuffing them in my mouth. Trust. We need to trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Conviction. We need to be convicted to the cause of Jesus Christ. And we need to be committed to our Savior. That's what faith means. Then you have meekness. It just means gentleness. We are to be gentle people, okay? Humility. We need to be humble. I ain't saying you have to be, you have to bow down before you, but you can answer with a humble answer. Modesty. Oh, does our world ever need that word today? Mildness. We have mild spirits, loving spirits. Now I realize there's a lot of things going on out there, but we as Christians need to have the mild spirit to pray for every situation. And submissiveness to God. I need to be submissive to my Lord. And temperance. Oh, there's a good one. You know, in this old Bible we have up here, right in the middle of it, if you'll turn to that old Bible, this, is, this Bible was given to a couple 1882 on their married day. This is an old Bible. It was made, the, it, the copyright was 1865. Civil War was just had, was over. That's how old this Bible is. God's word will stand forever. You turned about the middle of it, and there's a temperance page. Everybody in that family has their name signed on that. It just means they promised they wouldn't be drinking alcohol. That's exactly what the temperance meant here. But temperance actually means to, it means abstain. What do I need to abstain from that's drawing me away from Jesus Christ? It even says teetotalism. A tea, you, uh, when, when people used to not drink alcohol, they call them teetotalers. Teetotalers. Mo or moderation. Restraint. Sobriety. So important to God that he put temperance in there. Against, he says, now this is interesting, against such things there is no law. In other words... There can be no charge, you know, there, there's no charge you in the Bible against that, but I'm telling you, you want these things, you have to love me to get them. There's no law that's going to cover that, but I'm telling you, you need these things if you love me. You will accept these things, you will live this way if you open your door to me. You claim you open the door to Jesus, you will live these things. That's the bowl that Jesus brings to our supper table. So what is it saying here? Is that the fruit of the Spirit, the fruits that Jesus brings to our table when we open our door to him. That there's no law that 
orders them into our lives, they must be brought into our hearts through the love of Jesus when we open our individual doors to Him. So to conclude here this morning, this verse before us this morning, I stand at the door and knock, is so very important to the lost world to open their door, or their heart for the first time, and also to the believer that will open our door every day. The lost to save their soul and to save to guide us in our daily walks for Jesus, our Savior. After today, this picture is going to be hanging in that hallway. And I want you to look at it every time you walk by. Please look at it often. Remind us, somebody, y'all look at it. I want somebody to find that handle for me, would you please? And let me know where it's at. Remember, you cannot draw a handle on there and you take me over there. Uh, that woman is, anyway, okay, okay. He wants to feed our spiritual lives. And please remember, all this pertains to me also. I am just a lost sinner saved by Jesus' grace. Too. I have to open my door every day. I make mistakes all the time. But guess what? You've got to forgive me. Whether you want to or not. And I will forgive you. Whether you like it or not. Let's forgive each other. And let's move on with Jesus Christ. He wants to feed us our spiritual lives today, right now. And with that, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into them and sup with them and them with me. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 But the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5 8. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. And then here it is, Revelation 3 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, any woman hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into them and sup with him and him with me. Will you let Jesus in today? Romans 10 9 through 11. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in that heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved from going to hell. That's very simple. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to open that door. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how bad you've done it. Jesus says, I'm knocking at your door. I'm ready to forgive you as soon as you open that door. Because, see, if you open that door, that means you're repenting. Lord, I'm sorry for what I did. He will forgive you no matter what you've done. I don't care how many people point their fingers at you or what they say about you. You can be forgiven today, right here, and start your life all over on a big old fat bowl of spiritual food today. Jesus says, I want to come in. I got my potluck. I got the best potluck you ever dreamed of having in your life. Let me in. Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father God, we come to you this morning.